Welcome to DrivenMavens.com. My name is Arvin and we are going to give you an introduction to digital painting. And to start that off, we are going to give you an introduction to constructing layers in Photoshop. Okay, so before we start getting into what layers can do for you and the advantages of layers, I'm going to talk about uh, what I do with a single layer. Actually, for this example here that I'm showing you, it's just a speed painting. It's just got a background layer. And typically when I start to maybe ideate and start exploring different ideas and maybe compositions and things, I just start with a background layer. Many of my speed paintings are created just on a single layer, which means I really don't get into too much details with adding uh, a, a separate layer for color or a separate layer for highlights or perspective lines and that sort of thing. My speed paintings are generally created to do just that, to get some quick compositions out, not having to worry about my perspective, not having to worry about so much about color and getting things completely perfect. The main intent is to get as much information on that layer as quickly as possible so I can ideate. That's it. So in this example we've just got a pit crew that's working on changing the tires of a Ford GT that's coming to the pit stop and we've got a guy that's coming in to refuel uh, the race car before it uh, uh, goes on its merry way to kick some butt on the race course. Now uh, a little bit about background. Now I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to convert this to a layer. And what that allows me to do is to be able to set certain parameters uh, for the layers. Now uh, I forgot to explain that the background also has a lock symbol. That lock symbol prevents you from getting access to the uh, parameter section of the layers that is shown just on the top left hand side. So I'm going to just convert this back to a layer. I'm just going to double click on this. I'm going to go back to layer 0. I'm not going to really name it yet. And then you see the grayed out portion that said normal before is now uh, highlighted in black and you've got a drop down menu that allows you to select uh, any of these parameters. Now we won't get into what those parameters do uh, but they do have an effect on the layers themselves. Now adding layers is pretty simple. Uh, not a big deal. Just on the lower uh, bottom right hand corner it says create new layer. You just click on it and it adds one on top of the existing layer that you have. Similarly you can just keep adding more and more but I'm just going to delete all these layers. Don't need them until we go to the next example. Now the next example I am going to, uh, I've just got a uh, pre-rendered sphere here. We're just going to enlarge the picture here and I'm going to show you how we can make use of adding layers. Now let's say I've got the sphere that I've rendered up and I want to add some details to it. Now the best, you know, one thing that you can do that if you want to add details to it you can just work on the existing layer in itself but the disadvantage of working on a, on a finished painting is that you don't have the opportunity to be able to correct your mistakes easily so if I start to render something uh, on the surface of the sphere on this particular layer then I'm sort of stuck with it which means that I might have to if I make a mistake I'm going to eventually need to I won't be able to erase it out because if I try to erase it it's just going to fill in those pixels with a uh, a white background. So here what, you know, what I'm doing is I'm just making a, a quick mark just to kind of show you that well if I made a mistake now I have to actually go back and repaint that area. This is similar to drawing freehand and just working with um, uh, paints and uh, or, or gouache paints or markers or something like that. If you make a mistake then you have to find a way to correct it. So I've gone back and now I've corrected that portion of it. Now 
Now for the layer one, what I've done here, I've, I've already pre-rendered just uh, some uh, surfaces here. So you can see the advantage of this is to be able to turn it on and off. That means I can experiment if I'm starting to create some different shapes and forms on top of an existing form, I don't have to commit myself to it. I can experiment away and I don't have to touch the base drawing or the base painting, which is a pretty good advantage. Especially if you have spent a lot of time on rendering and you like what you've got, you don't have to go back and try to re-render it and waste more time on it. So if I take this section here, uh, this section right here would just, you'd have this uh, slight little bump and you've got the one in the bottom and what you can see here is that I've actually drawn that section on layer number two so once again I don't have to try to repaint over this all I have to do is just turn that layer off which is the little eye icon right beside it so if you're intimidated in the beginning with digital painting this can really help you when you decide to explore and experiment. Uh, once again, I'm just going to shut this, take the uh, eye icon here, and I'm just going to click on it. And then from there, you can just see that you can shut that layer on and off. Pretty cool. Now, hopefully, this gave you a pretty decent start and an overview of what layers can do for you. Uh, we will have a, a part two on layers and I will show you how I break up the layers on a traditional detailed digital painting of mine uh, when I start uh, painting a, a Camaro here. Uh, that should give you some insights with how I start to set up my perspective lines and how to use the layers to assist and aid me as I uh, create the final painting. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and uh, Hope to see you here next time on DrivenMavens.com.